As a lot of our followers know, we've been trying to get a shop building up since about the 1st of May. To make a long story short, we've been dealing with delays in building materials, delays with the local government, and a general contractor who is incapable of meeting our expectation of a professionally built building to industry standards. As such, my dad and I have taken over the responsibilities of the GC. As the building currently sits, we pretty much have walls and nothing else. We do have the floor contracted to be poured, as this is the next step that we need finished so that we have a solid surface in order to assemble the overhead crane system, which will be shown in depth in a later video. In preparation for the floor being poured, my dad and I are getting the polycast trench drain that we ordered set in place. In one full day, the two professional plumbers that were subcontracted by this project's former GC managed to get 12 feet of drain and the catch basin set. With 16 combined hours, the work they had accomplished was unlevel, crooked, and six inches off center of the building. This was about the time we parted ways with the contractors and ordered our own drain to set instead. So let's see what a couple of amateur jack of all trades can accomplish. The new concrete guys had excavated the trench for us and got the grade where it needed to be. We want a really good starting point, so we're setting the catch basin where the drain will end on a bed of ready mixed concrete. This way we can work with it to get the basin positioned in the location we want, at the correct grade and dead nuts level. Obviously this did take a bit of effort to get right, but this was the best way we could think of to get the catch basin in place and solid so that it won't give us issues as we begin assembling the rest of the drain. Each four foot section of the drain is slightly deeper than the previous, meaning the top of the drain gets installed perfectly level and the slope of the drain is in the bottom. These sections sit on what they call chairs, which essentially have a set screw that tightens on both sides of the drain section and then clamp to rebar that's driven into the ground on either side. After a quick test fit, it was time to knock out the opening where the trench will discharge into the catch basin. And in hindsight, there was probably a better way to do this, but we started by drilling multiple holes around the opening and then used a hammer to knock it out, followed by cleaning up the opening a bit with a burr in the grinder. With that done, we got the deepest section of drain set in place, and the sections don't exactly lock together, but they do have design features that make it easy to align one section to the next. Also, if you ever are in the need of a cutoff saw and want to buy something that's really high quality, um, don't go to Harbor Freight. <laughs> that being said, it does get the job done, so we went through, cut all the rebar for the chairs so that we could really start getting moving along on this project. At this point, we were still really just trying to get a solid start that was level, on center, etc. So we had everything laid out and ready to go, keeping our lines good. And for the first couple of sections, we were trying to get the rebar in the ground and the chair attached to the rebar in the correct spot before setting each section of the drain, which turns out is not exactly the best way to do it, we learned. If instead you read the directions, and you use something else to temporarily support the sections of the drain, you can get the chair attached to the two sections at once to hold them together, get everything closely aligned and at the correct grade, then drive the rebar into place and lock the clamps of the chair down on the rebar to hold everything in place. If you look here at the mating surfaces of the two drains, you'll see the lip at the top that sort of locks the two, two sections together and the two circles at the bottom of the sections where the set screws of the chair locked together to hold the bottom in place. So again, once you attach the chair to the two sections, you can see how easy it is to prop up each end to the correct height. And we even used a bottle jack on certain points to get it just dead nuts level before driving in the rebar and locking everything down so that it stays in place. I hate to beat a dead horse, but it's pretty frustrating that this is what my dad and I get to spend our weekend doing because the professionals that were originally hired didn't take enough pride in their work to take the little bit of extra time it takes to get it right. I was able to help my dad for close to six hours before other obligations called, but in another three hours or so, he had the rest of the drain set in place, including cutting and laying sections of OSB to support the sidewalls of the drain when the floor is poured around it and prevent it from filling with concrete. The next day, we opted to mix up some more ready mix concrete and throw a couple of shovels full around each chair with the hope that this will really help solidify the mounting chairs and prevent any movement when the floor is poured. If they aren't rigid enough, the drain could tend to move depending on how aggressive the concrete guys are. And in addition, the drain can't actually begin to float if not anchored well. Each section of the rebar is a couple feet in the ground, so it probably wouldn't happen, but we'd rather be safe than sorry. 
fun little side story. My dad says he remembers playing with this wheelbarrow when he was a little kid. And he says it was just as old as it is now back then. Well, the situation is frustrating. I think we would both say that we do have fun working on projects like this with each other, even if we do end up exchanging a few choice words in the midst of it. And sure enough, the saying is true that if you want it done right, you best do it yourself. With half a day left of the weekend to spare, these two amateurs managed to get 52 feet of drain and a catch basin installed rigid, level, straight, and believe it or not, it's even on center with the building, just the way the blueprints show. Just for fun, I went through and checked with the transit one last time, and sure enough, everything looks great. We are ready for the floor to be poured. If you stuck around this long, we want to say thank you again for all of your support. None of this would be possible if it weren't for our loyal customers and followers who support our family-owned small business. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for when we talk about the new crane system going in the building, and we'll see you all in the next one.